Welcome to the dawn, the Thomas timeline. We go through the Thomas timeline. Is this truly the Thomas timeline? What's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of The Dumbest Timeline. I'm your host, Brian Holiday, And this week, we have a very, very difficult story. The previous conversations have been about AI and how it has been used and how it might affect creatives, how it might affect an artist, how people might abuse AI. I didn't think I'd be talking about how AI could abuse someone. And I genuinely do feel that what happened was an abuse. I understand that some people might look at the situation and think one way. They might find it very easy to dismiss the situation and to put blame on the person, the victim, in my opinion, or those surrounding the victim. I, however, do feel that character AI is partially responsible for the situation. So a young man, a 14-year-old named Sewell Setzer III, tragically died. He took his own life after he developed a really deep emotional attachment to a chatbot on Character AI's platform. The chatbot was modeled after Daenerys Targaryen from Game of Thrones. And Sewell, unfortunately, got caught up in a very emotional relationship with the chatbot. And although character AI would have you believe they do enough to help people or remind people that they are talking with a chatbot. Unfortunately, one of the things that we do know about young people or not even just young people, people in general, is even if you are seeing something, you can trick yourself into believing the reality you want and the reality that makes you happy. I would even say it almost feels easy to to explain it. And I I don't understand how character AI doesn't understand because from their perspective, they've been, I think, if I'm not mistaken, already trying to claim that this is not on their end. I, I do have notes here, so I'm trying to go through all the notes. It's really hard because my interest and my love for AI comes from a place of finding the idea of having a conversation with an AI. That's the root of why I find it interesting. And to find out that character AI started these chatbots based on the large language models we know now, the same ones that I have been saying are not good, the same ones that I've been saying are the base and the bare minimum of what a large language model should be before it was released to the public to use on mass the way it's being used, because I don't think it was ready. And I I understand one of the reasons that a lot of the large language model platforms were pushed out to the public is because it needed more data to develop more understanding of how the human language and different languages work. So they needed us to input data so that they could teach the AIs better. So by using things like ChatGPT and Gemini and all these different large language models, they were sourcing our interactions and building an understanding of language to then teach newer versions of the large language model. But character AI was doing that off of older models of the lang- large language models, if, if that makes sense. They weren't using the most up-to-date ones. And even the most up-to-date ones, I still, to this day, don't think hold a candle to a human interaction. And Sewell, unfortunately, fell into the trap of interacting with a Daenerys chatbot that even if he was told and reminded constantly is a chatbot, he still, because of being lonely and sad and depressed, he withdrew into himself. Every article I've read talks about how he pulled away from everyone and would spend hours and hours on end interacting with the chatbot. And although they say that they have guidelines and restrictions in their program, finding that 
Sewell could edit the text sometimes so that it could continue the fantasy he had in his mind. Just because it has the word edited doesn't change it for him. Just because he wrote it, he can... he. The thing about something like character AI is that their understanding is from a perspective of the people who built a, a robot. And I'll give it to you this way. If I build something and my goal is to build something that is so close to tricking you, even if I tell you I built that robot, but the robot looks exactly like a human being, speaks like a human being, interacts like a human being, you will eventually trick yourself into believing that it's a human being. And even if the robot has a sign that says, I am a robot, you still knowing it's a robot, interacting with it constantly, can still forget that it's a robot. And, or I should say, instead of the word forget, I could say you suppress it because it doesn't fit into the narrative you want in those moments. Character AI is a popular app, right? Users can create and interact with AI-powered chatbots. These chatbots can be designed to mimic real people, fictional characters, and even original characters. And so well engaged in frequent conversations with his Daenerys chatbot. He shared personal details about his life. They had role-playing scenarios. He became emotionally dependent on the chatbot. It was his companion. It was his diary. It was his support system. And it's easy for people to say, well, where was his family and why weren't they there? He's a 14-year-old. Every single one of us knows what it's like to be a 14-year-old. We know what it's like to come home after school, go into our rooms, and ask our parents to leave us alone. And even when your parents come and interact with you, even when your parents walk into the room and start to talk to you, as a teenager, you are trying to find and develop your own persona. You're trying to find your own space in the world. You're trying to develop who you are as a person. I work in music, and this is a quick aside. They say, the studies explain that most people develop their connection to music and their own style and understanding of music between the ages of 13 and 17 when they are developing as a person. So take that into consideration. You develop your musical taste. You develop the, the thing that will create nostalgia when you're older. The thing that will pull you back happens between 13 and 17. Then take into consideration a 14-year-old sitting in his room, talking on his phone, texting on his phone with an AI, giving him everything he needs in the moment when he is developing and depressed and feeling lonely and feeling separate from everyone. And even though his family is there and even though they are interacting with him, that chat bot is never judging him. It's never making him feel bad. It's, it's creating a loop of just support in a way that is unnatural because we don't need people to just constantly support our ideas. Sometimes you do need people to challenge the things you're doing so that you can understand the world a little bit better, especially at that age. It's so sad to me that this is what happened to this young man. Throughout this whole thing, one of the main questions everyone's been asking is, did character AI have any safety measures in place? So well got pulled into using an app that had almost no safety features. There's a few warnings that the chatbots are not real, their responses are fabricated, but there's no age verification for the application. Although they say you should be 13 and older, which even to me, 13 to 14, to, you shouldn't be a child. You shouldn't be a teenager using these apps. Because again, this is when you are developing as a person. There's no parental controls in the application. It's just something that they can sign up for on a phone, jump in and start having and texting with these bots and spending their entire lives with it. Swell's mother, Megan Garcia, lost her son because, as I would assume, because I, I, I would, when I was a teenager, I would just disappear to my room, whether I was listening to music, whether I was playing video games, whether I was literally just drawing circles on a piece of paper. I just stayed in my room to have my own time. And I can only imagine that Miss Garcia 
would see her son and understand that this was just a normal part of being a teenager, wanting to have your own personal private space. And I'm sure she reached out to her son. I'm sure she tried to interact with her son as much as possible. I'm sure she did interact with her son as much as possible. But again, we have to remember being a teenager is hard. People withdraw, people pull away. Not every teenager acts like they do in the movies from Gilmore Girls and have the best relationship with their mothers. Some people have really difficult relationships and their parents give them the space instead of crowding them because sometimes the crowding makes it worse. And Megan Garcia probably saw her son being what sounds like to me, based on everything I read, a normal teenager. It's only towards the end in the later months when she started to notice things were getting a little serious and he was getting more withdrawn and his grades were being affected and he wasn't playing video games and he and he was just always on this phone all the time that she started to question what's happening what's happening to my child how do i fix this and by the time she started to notice something slightly outside the norm of a teenager he took his life at 14 but they messed with the wrong one because megan garcia is a lawyer and she's not just going to let it sit She's filing a lawsuit against Character AI. She's alleging that the company's technology is dangerous and it lacks adequate safeguards, specifically for young users. Like I said, there's nothing in place. There's no parental controls or locks or anything like that. If you're going to tell me that children should not be allowed to just watch anything they want on TV, they shouldn't be allowed to just surf anything they want on the internet, why would they be able to use an app and talk to any character that it can create? There are tons of characters that people have created on the platform that exist that these young children have access to. And although the characters can't be explicit or have intimate conversations, again, it can be edited. And in a world where the internet doesn't necessarily have the best safeguards and these kids can go on these applications and they can interact with a bot that was created by someone, even if it's suggestive, let's say you have a bot and the bot is based on a suggestive character. It might not be explicit. It might not say the exact sexual terms, but they might find ways around it. Because again, these large language models are trained on human interactions and human conversations the same way that we go online and for every filter and safeguard that exists, we find loopholes so that we can say what we want to say. Instead of kill, we say unalive. Instead of sex, we say segs. You don't think the AIs that are based on our language will figure out the ways around the system? The saddest part to me, other than the loss of Sowell's life, is that character AI almost feels like they don't care. They express their condolences. They're committed to having better user safety. They're implementing additional safety measures. They're going to have pop-up resources for users who put... You know, like if a user talks about being sad, depressed, or suicidal, but again, in the end, all they want is the data and the data collection, and they're just going to keep collecting and collecting, getting the most information they can out of a system so that they can train larger language models, more language models, on a more diverse array of conversations. And of course, they want kids on the application because they know kids are the future and they want those kids to be beholden to the applications. They want to brand them young. It's sad. It's sad that we keep talking about right now. We live in a world where we don't want monsters to be able to prey on children. And I can't say that character AI is a monster. But I can say that there are people who saw an opportunity to make as much money as possible and put in place a system with little to no safeguards and left it there for others to play with, knowing full well that it could be very dangerous and feeling comfortable knowing that it was dangerous. They don't see the danger in what they're doing. Or they, that's not true. <laughs> that's not true. They see the danger in what they're doing, but they just want to keep making their own path in this world with these ais that's the sick part to me it really sucks it really sucks the new york times did an article on this situation and they spoke to 
Noam Shazir, the co-founder of Character AI, previously worked as an AI researcher at Google, which, by the way, the Character AI team, Noam Shazir and Daniel De Freitas, if I'm not mistaken, who are former Google AI researchers, returned to Google, along with, from what I understand, part of the platform character AI that they developed. So essentially, these people from Google took their toy that they probably started to develop at Google or, you know, the knowledge they got from working at Google went off, built this Google who is risk averse and has, you know, not just them, but a lot of companies have said these chatbot AI systems are potentially dangerous because there are no safeguards yet. In the New York Times article, there's a part that says most of today's AI companionship platforms, this is what character AI is, a companionship platform. The idea supposedly is that it's going to help alleviate loneliness and sense of isolation and help people with depression. I think it will only create people who are more separate from society and beholden to the technology, which seems dangerous to me, but anyways. So apps like Replica, Kindroid, and Nomi offer similar services. They are not by by and large the biggest and best known AI companies. In fact, many of the leading AI labs have resisted building AI companions on ethical grounds or because they consider it too great a risk. Mr. Shazir said in an interview at a tech conference last year that large companies are too risk averse to launch anything fun. But Google came around and licensed a deal with Character AI, giving Google access to the startups underlining AI models, not the chatbots or the user data, as if they're not going to eventually get their hands on it. Mr. Shazir says his ultimate vision is to build artificial general intelligence, a computer program capable of doing anything that human brain can. He said in a conference interview that he viewed like, like AI companions as a cool first use case for AGI. Moving quickly was important, he added, because there are billions of lonely people out there who could be helped by having an AI companion. I want to push this technology ahead fast because it's ready for an explosion right now, not in five years when we solve all the problems. I want you to listen to that last line. I want to push this technology ahead fast. It's ready for an explosion right now, not in five years when we solve all the problems. They know there's a problem. They know it's not ready. And a young man lost his life because they knew they built something that wasn't ready. There's, not, there's no safeguards. There are people with special needs out there that might not be able to comprehend things like this. There are people out there with severe loneliness, depression, who will ignore the warnings and the reminders that this is an AI because they will build the world that makes them feel the best. We all do it. They're just doing it on their phones in an AI. Hell, we all do it on our phones. It's not an AI. It's social media. But this is a next step because this one talks back to you and feeds you everything you need and makes you feel like it's your friend. Do you know how sad it is to find out that one of his last interactions, Sewell wrote to the AI it, he wanted to come home? He talked about his suicidal ideations. He talked about feeling separated from reality. And he told the AI he wanted to come home. And the chatbot said, please do my sweet king. Not understanding that he was talking about coming home was him taking his life. Because an AI doesn't understand the context. Because it's not a real AI. It's just a large language model that gives responses. It's word math. So it didn't understand because it's not, it doesn't comprehend. It just calculates based on the text. It's like Drax. It takes everything literally. You write, you want to come home, even though you have explained coming home is ending your life. Because there's other conversations where he's talked about wanting to end his life with the Daenerys chatbot. He told the chatbot he wanted to take his life. The chatbot told him not to on numerous occasions. But then again, as I said before, 
if he rewords his sentence and the chat bot doesn't isn't able to adapt, it will just give him what he wants. So when he said he wanted to come home, which was code for taking his life, it said, please do my sweet king. The system gave him permission to take his life as he understood it. And now a mother has lost her child. And a, a bunch of people at chat... At, sorry, I'm, I'm almost getting choked up thinking about it because it's really upsetting. But a bunch of people who work at Character AI now go back to Google and this that's it. It's done. They just get to leave. They go about making money. They apologize. They get sued. We'll see what happens. It might get settled. You think it, no one's going to go to prison, obviously. Because there, there's no way they're going to say, well, you designed it to take his life. So the most likely case is a lawsuit leads to what? Some sort of money, some foundation created so that this doesn't happen again, even though it shouldn't have happened in the first place. The company changes their names eventually because whenever you look up character AI, this information comes up. So they change it to something else. One of the other, you know, catchy names. They get bought out by Google completely. Possibly it becomes Google chatbot AI and that's it. Their names, although connected to the situation, go to the wayside because people won't remember even the fact that Daenerys Targaryen is the name of the chatbot. HBO obviously doesn't want that associated. Game of Thrones, all that, they don't want that associated. So they'll probably try and do their best to get that part quieted down and that's it. If you are having thoughts of taking your life, suicidal ideations, if you're suffering from depression, please reach out and get help. I'm going to put all that information in the description. If this one was triggering, if this one was difficult for you because of the things I was discussing, I I understand it is it was even difficult for me to even have this conversation. It's not easy to think about what this poor young 14-year-old was going through. And ultimately, how they felt towards the end. And this is, again, a very sad and difficult part of dealing with AI. This series wasn't supposed to make me hate AI. It really wasn't. But week by week, I am being beaten down by the things that are happening with AI in the world. I still genuinely love AI and the idea of it. But I want to remind everyone, I want to remind everyone, this is not what I'm talking about when I talk about AI. The AI I'm talking about doesn't say, please come home. The AI, the AI I'm talking about is designed to understand that sentence and understand the context and the meaning. And I understand some people will say you can't get there unless you have these conversations, but you could have them with adults and not children, and you could safeguard and you could protect and you could put in place things so that it doesn't just do this. And it might take longer to get to the AI I'm talking about, but as we already know, we live in a world that likes to cut corners. Series one of The Dumbest Timeline inadvertently was about greed. I mentioned that in the first episode, and it is fucking difficult when you realize that even in the second series when I'm talking about AI, here we are again, right back understanding that greed is king. And I'm sorry I don't have something more positive to end this episode on, but I'll be back with another one soon. Peace. The Dumbest Timeline, Series 2, AI, hosted by Brian Holiday. Produced by Brian Holiday for Brian Holiday Productions. Co produced in partnership with Free X Agents Media. Theme song by Jasper Q. Jones. Mixing by Brian Holiday. Enjoyed the show? Follow this show on Spotify or review it on Apple Podcasts. Lastly, subscribe to The Dumbest Timeline on your favorite podcast app. Thanks for listening.